All right then, campus. So we have our regular expression right here for a telephone number. But at the minute, it's not really doing anything. It's just sitting around in space, chilling out. What we want to do is hook it up to this form field right here for the telephone number so that when a user starts to type in a number, what we're going to do is grab that thing that they type in, that value, and we're going to test it against this regular expression to see if we have a match and to see if that field is valid. Make sense? Okay, cool. So just as a heads up, there is going to be a bit of JavaScript in this tutorial. So if you feel like you need a refresher on any of it, I'm going to leave two links down below for different playlists. One is JavaScript for beginners and the other is JavaScript and the DOM. So they will both probably help you. Okay, then. so let's start. So there's a couple of different steps we need to take here. The first step is to grab a hold of all these different input fields and attach an event listener to each one of them. OK, so the event is going to be a key up event. That is when a user clicks a key and then keys up. OK, that is when a user has typed something into it. So we want to listen out for that so that we can see what they've typed in and see if that field is a match. Make sense? Cool. So we're going to attach an event listener to each one of these different things. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find out which regular expression is associated with each field so that when a user types in a particular field, we test it against the appropriate regular expression. Now, to do that, we're going to be using the name attribute of each of these fields. You can see right here we have a name of username, name of email, a name of password, etc. So when a user types in a field, we'll say, OK, we'll find the name of that field, telephone. Then what we'll do is we'll look at that telephone rejects and try and match it against that. Make sense? Cool. So first of all, let us now grab a hold of these different inputs. So to do that, we'll say const inputs. This is where we're storing them. Oops, I cannot type. So const inputs. OK, and that is going to be equal to document dot query selector all because we want all of them, not just one thing. And in here, we need to say what we want. Now, we just want the input. This is a CSS selector. If we did this in CSS, it's going to style all inputs. If we do it here, it's going to grab all input fields. OK, so now we have those stored in here and this is a HTML collection. Now we need to add an event listener to listen for a key up event to each of these inputs. Now we can't just do this inputs dot add event listener, etc, because this right here is a collection of elements and we can't use this add event listener method on a collection of elements. We can only use it on one element. So what we need to do is cycle through the inputs and attach the event listener to each one. And to do that, we'll use a for each method. So inside this for each method, we're going to fire a function. I'll be using an arrow function, which looks like this. We have our parenthesis, then an equals, then the arrow, then the code block. But you can use a normal function if you wish. So we're cycling through these inputs and each time around we have access to the individual item or if you prefer to call it an individual input. All right. So now we need to take that input each time around and add an event listener to it. So we'll say add event listener. Now the event we want to listen to is going to be the key up event. So that's the first parameter right here. We're listening for that event. The second parameter is again going to be a function. I'll be using an arrow function as well. We take the event object as a parameter, then our equals an arrow, then the code block. OK, so we've added an event listener to each one of these inputs now. So let's just test this out by logging something to the console. We'll console.log whichever input was clicked in or typed in. So like I said, we'll use these name properties right here. And the way we can get those is by saying, well, we'll take the event right here. Then what we want is the target element, which is the element that that event occurred on. So we can say e dot target. Then we want one of the attributes of that target. Remember, it's the name attribute. So we can say dot attributes, then the name attribute. Then we want the value of that name attribute. OK, so what we're doing here is we're logging out this thing here, username, email, password, telephone, etc. So let's just give this a whirl, save it and refresh over here in the browser. I'm also going to open up the dev tools so that we can see. And currently it's on a different screen, but if I do this, then it's going to go to the right over here. 
So let's go to the console and zoom in a little bit so you can see. Now, when we start to type in something, you can see right here it's saying telephone. So we know we're typing in the telephone field. Up here, if we start to type, it's saying username, email, password, and slug. All right, so now we know which one we're typing into. So we know when we're typing into a specific field, which regular expression pattern to test against. All right. So the second step is to make that test. So what I'll be doing is creating a validation function to do this. So function, and we'll call this function validate. This is just my own function. I'm making it up. Now, this function is going to take in two parameters. The first parameter is going to be the field that we're testing. So it's going to be whatever field this is right here. So we'll pass through either telephone, username, email, password, etc. The second thing that we're going to test is going to be the regex that we want to test against. So which one of these properties up here? So we'll type that in there. Let's open up this function. And inside, what we want to do is see if something is valid. Now, the way we test something against a regex pattern is by saying regex, whatever the regex is, dot test, and then the value that we want to test, right? So it's going to be the field dot value, like that. Oops. Can I spell? No, the field value. So what we're going to be doing down here is when someone types into a particular field, we're going to be grabbing that input field and we're going to be sending it in to this validate function right here. We're also going to be grabbing this regex pattern and we're going to be sending it in here as this parameter. So we're going to take this regex, then we're going to test it, not text it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the thing we want to test it against, which is the value of this input field that we passed in. Does that make sense? So first of all, let's just log this to the console. So let's combine all of that. And then down here, we want to call that function. So let's comment this out. And instead, we'll say validate. And we want to pass in two things here. The first one is going to be the input field. So e.target, that's going to grab that particular input field, right, that we typed in. Then what we're going to do is passing the regex pattern, which is going to be this thing. Now to get that, we'll say patterns, which is the object name, then in brackets, we want to pass in essentially this telephone, right? Now we know we can get access to telephone or whatever the name of the field typed in is by using this thing right here. We just logged that to the console. So instead of typing in telephone here, because it might be the name or the password, we instead pop that in right there. And that's going to get whatever value of the name property on each of the input fields is when we type in them. And it's going to pass that in to the patterns object and find that regular expression. So now we're passing in the target element and the regular expression for that element. Make sense? All right. So once we're passing those in, we're taking the regex right here and we're testing it with the value in that input field. So this is going to return either true or false. It's going to return true when a particular field is valid, and it's going to return false when a field is not valid. So let us test this out. Refresh, and over here, I'm going to start to type in a number. And you see we have false, because at the minute, this zero is being tested against this regular expression, and we don't get a match. So it's returning false. It's only going to return true when it's 11 digits long, according to this regex pattern. So let's carry on typing out numbers. You can see we get falses, 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 etc., all the way until we get 11 numbers. Then we get a true. So now we're saying, OK, now this is a match. Cool. So we're passing it here. However, if I type another one, then it goes to false again. Delete it, it goes to true again. So we're successfully now linking up this form field to this regular expression and we're testing it right here so we know when a particular field has passed this test when we get a match so we don't want to do this we don't just want to log out true or false what we want to do is check whether the this field is a match or not whether it passes validation so we'll do an if statement then inside we're going to test that regex again so we'll say regex which is what we pass in then dot test, 
Then inside the brackets, we're going to pass in the field dot value. All right, so we're checking if this is true or false. If it's true, then it means we get a match and it's passed validation. So what we can do is add a class to this thing right here, the field. So we'll say field dot class name is equal to valid, just like that. So now when we get a match, it's going to give this input field a class of valid. When it's not a match, so we'll do an else. When this returns false right here, and we don't get a match, what we'll do is say field dot class name is going to be equal to invalid, like so. So let's give this a whirl. If we go over to the form and refresh, what I'm going to do is head to the elements instead and inspect this element. We can see this input field right here at the minute has no class. It's neither valid or invalid because it's not been touched yet. But if we type in a number, which is not valid, we can see now class equals invalid. So at the minute, this form is invalid and it's going to remain invalid until we type in 11 numbers. Now you can see this switch to a valid class. So that is pretty awesome. We're now using this regular expression. We're hooking it up to this form field right here so that when a user types in it, it's going to test it. It's going to decide whether we get a match or not by testing that regex pattern with the field value. When we get a match, it's going to add that class name of valid. When we don't get a match, it's going to add that class name of invalid. That is freaking awesome. By the way, if we carry on adding numbers here, it's going to go back to invalid. All right, so now we have this general structure in place. I know it was probably maybe a, quite a lot to take in in one tutorial. I just wanted to get this structure in place so that going forward, we can create these different regular expressions. And no matter which one we type into over here, it's going to detect that and test against the appropriate regular expression. I hope all this makes sense. If it doesn't, feel free to rewind and watch it again. Or if you're struggling with the JavaScript, like I said, check out my JavaScript and the DOM tutorial series. That will really help you with all of this kind of stuff.